Hi everybody, welcome to Money's Inspired Creations. As you know, I am Money and this is my channel. So please do like and subscribe, hit that little bell, ding, ding, ding. And then comment down below your thoughts on this video. So today I'm gonna try something a little bit different just because I'm feeling called to do it by spirit. Um, I am gonna give a very short, I think short, we'll see what happens. Um, a very short tarot reading for all signs for the actual the harvest moon at the end of the month which is going to be happening october 31st this harvest moon is also a blue moon in case you didn't know so if you have any sorts of crystals i suggest putting them out on your decks or by the window take some water and putting it outside as well underneath the full moon so that it can really um take in those energies because it is definitely a full moon which is the harvest moon of the year but it's also going to be a blue moon so there's going to be all sorts of energies happening and you're going to want to soak up those energies 111 i just saw that for any of you that like number synchronicities as well if you watch my other video i am wearing pyrite today um, it is to help me stay grounded sometimes especially during Mercury retrograde, my Gemini sun and my Libra rising, they tend to float off into the wonderful astral realms and then I'm not too grounded. So my, my Taurus moon is over here like, stay, don't go anywhere. Please stay grounded on earth, don't leave. And you know, the other parts of my astral chart are like, no, bye, we're out, see you later, we're gone into the astrals, and we're just gonna have a good time there without you. I also wanted to show off my smoky quartz. It's a palm stone. It also helps um, to take away some negative energies, and it does help with grounding as well. I like to hold my smoky quartz palm stone if I'm feeling sad or upset in any way, um, sometimes I'll hold it for a couple minutes. I like this stone. Um, sorry, the energy of it was just pulling me in. So this stone is actually pretty powerful. It's a pretty powerful little guy. Um, kind of just going to show it in the light a little bit. I don't know if you can see the shimmer. Sometimes crystals have different shimmer about them that you can see under light. Also, sometimes they'll have a rainbow that's in them. And those rainbows also show that it's a pretty powerful stone. Um, at the moment, if I hold it, I can feel it actually vibrating on my palm. Some people are able to feel it some people aren't um i'm just really in tune with like energies and because i'm intuitive and empathic and i also work with energies when i do energy healings so i can feel the energies coming off of things and this this guy's a little powerful one and i've realized that i probably should have been holding it a lot more than i have lately i've kind of not been doing that i've been really focusing more on wearing my my bracelet jewelry those of you that know me know that i love having different types of crystal jewelry um and so i've actually spent a lot more time on that recently like wearing that energy than i have with actually touching my stones see if you can see eh, the light's not that good but if you can see in here there's actually a bunch of different shimmer um the more you look at it, the more you wind up seeing, actually. Oh, yeah. He's a little powerful guy. I also have a couple more here. And since I'm talking about it, I might as well show you. Um, these ones I have on, like, my little window banister thing. So they're always getting the energy of the moon throughout the season. These are the ones that I just keep up there all the time. And this is rose quartz. And so it helps balancing out the heart chakra see there's some shimmer in here uh, like up in there i don't know if you can really see it uh, there you go right there mm. 
my Amazonite. I love this one. It, it looks purple right here, but that's just because my light is coming out of like this pink lamp. So it's coming across that purple, but it's actually a very pretty blue. Oh, there you go. You can kind of see it when the light adjusts. And this one's very calming. It's such a very calming stone. Um, I like to hold this if I'm just feeling upset or it actually helps when I have a headache. Um, if I'm having like a migraine, which I get a lot, I like to hold this stone and sometimes I'll just put it up. Hey, look, I can see the pretty blue. Um, I just put it up against my third eye like that for a little bit and it does help to get rid of the pain. If you're new to crystals, you should all have one of these amethyst. Doesn't have to be an amethyst heart geode, um, which this is. It could just be amethyst in general. I really like this one because of all the purple. Oh, she's dusty. Yes, uh, crystals don't have gender specific, but if you ask the crystal whether it's more male or female, it might tell you what its name is and what its purpose is, but you have to be in a meditative state in order to get an answer. Oh, let's see. It's purple, it's beautiful. It does have rainbows in it and it has sparkle. This is a good one to have because it helps with um, your higher chakras, but it also helps in general to ground and to protect you. So it's a good crystal to have all around. Uh, the last one I want to show you is this clear quartz. It's not super, super clear, but it has a lot of shimmer. As you can see, the shimmer. Um, if I twist it, I wonder if you can see, but there's a lot of rainbows in here too. So this is a pretty powerful guy as well. Um, ah, I think there might have been some rainbow there. If you can see it inside. I don't usually work a lot with this one. Um, I don't know why. It's a pretty, pretty good one to work with. But even though it has all this shimmer and all these rainbows in here, um, I would honestly say that this guy is more powerful because I can feel more energy coming off of this one than this one. I did get this one actually on Amazon. This one I wound up buying off of somebody on Facebook. And I could definitely give you information if you want to know more about who that is. Uh, I've gotten quite a few crystals from her actually. Um, and all the crystals that I've gotten from her have been handpicked from her when she goes to different shows, um, and they are very powerful. Miss Evening is here. Come here. Oh, let's see. Hi, Evening. As soon as I talk about crystals, she's always coming. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and get into the reading. Let me get some water first. So, I will be using two decks, and if I'm called to it, then I will be using um, my OG tarot deck of my own. Um, it's not completed. The words are completed and everything, but I haven't finished coloring it. So I don't know if I want to bring it out or not. I'll just see what spirit tells me. Um, but the two decks I'm going to be doing the reading are with this first one. Angel Tarot Deck by Doreen Virtue. I know it's backwards, I'm sorry. If you know tarot, you probably have it. And I'll also be using the Romance Angels Oracle Deck, also by Doreen Virtue. I don't know, should I show it? I don't know, I really don't know. There's also my deck. I don't know what card to show for it, so I'm not going to sh show it at the moment. Um, but I will be calling this deck my Divine Masculine Oracle. And my deck is a little bit different than other Oracle de decks because it has a mix of 
the major arcana from the tarot as well as my own take on oracle cards so even though i did put like the major arcana into my own deck it's a hundred card deck even though i did put the major arcana in here it does it, it does have my own take based off of the divine masculine um in the future i might make a divine feminine oracle deck but at the moment it's just this one um i gotta finish coloring it first i have about 25 cards that i still need to color um, but we'll see I'll, I'll get finished with that quickly yeah just looking at them okay so if i'm called to use my divine masculine oracle deck i will i'll also be painting the backs too when i'm all said and done so let's get started so I'm going to first start out with shuffling the Angel Tarot deck by Doreen, Doreen, Doreen Virtue. Don't know why I'm all bleh. And these cards are actually difficult to shuffle normally. Um, but I haven't used them in a while, so I want to make sure that they're shuffled really good. Probably should have shuffled before I started the reading, but it's fine. Yeah, I feel like my little fingers are, ah, it's hard for me to actually, you know, some of the decks I can just shuffle easily, whereas this one, I'm just going to have to do that, kind of flop them down. All right, let's see. So today, it's mid-October. Can you believe it? It feels like just yesterday that we were, I don't know, in June. My birthday's in June, Gemini, right? It really feels like we were just in June and now here we are basically almost done with October. At the end of this week, we're going to be literally a week away from being done with October. So I'd like to get a full moon reading for, general full moon reading for everybody. I think I said all signs at the beginning, but we're already 12 minutes in, so I don't want you guys to wait too long. Um, can I just get some reading for all signs for October 31st? Let's see, any guidance, spirit? Any guidance whatsoever? So I don't read reversals unless I'm told by spirit that I need to read a reversal. Um, two of these cards came out in reversed, but I don't need to read the reversed of it. Let me see if there's any more and then I will go ahead and start reading for you. I feel like there's one more spirit, one more general advice for the end of October for the full moon for the blue moon there we go right, so the first card that came jumping out let me turn these over first Okay, the first card that came jumping out was the Awakening card, Archangel Gabriel. All right, so it says, look at things from a different perspective, a temporary standstill, it is important to be yourself. So I'm gonna put that off to the side because it came jumping out before the rest of the cards. Then we had three cards that came out, which is the Empress, also part of the Major Arcana, and just like the Awakening card. We have the Empress's Angel Gabriel. It says, lavish abundance, give birth to your dreams, nurture yourself and others. Followed by the Knight of Water. So if you are 
if, if you know about regular tarot, the Knight of Water would be like the Page of Cups. So in this deck, the Knight of Water means emotional, romantic, enthusiastic, contemplative. Falling in love or wedding proposals, the need to balance emotions. Go ahead and show that. That came out with the Knight of Fire. So passionate, adventurous, self-assured, restless. A sudden event that needs immediate attention. Time is of the essence. Think things through carefully. So I'm going to go ahead and just read the descriptions of each and then I'm going to give my intuitive reading. That way you can take what message resonates with you the most, whether it be what is coming from the cards or what I am telling you from spirit. The next one is... 15, which is Major Arcana Ego for Archangel Jophiel. A false sense of entrapment, being overly focused on material things, negative or fear-based thoughts. Now this next one came out two at the same time. Eight of Water and the Ten of Water, which is the Eight of Cups and the Ten of Cups. So the Eight of Cups, a desire to move on, the search for something more meaningful, spiritual and emotional growth. And then the Ten of Cups is a contented and rewarded family life. Your emotional and material needs are met, trustworthy relationships. We also have the Queen of Air. Queen of Air, independent, experienced, realistic, and witty. Objective decision-making, clearing away all that no longer serves you, seeing the humor in a situation. We have the King of Water. Trustworthy, compassionate, respected, cultured. Open your heart and mind to those around you. Trustworthy and heartfelt advice. Charity work. As well as Two of Water, a relationship that continues to grow forgiveness the positive resolution of a conflict okay so let's see what we can go ahead and get from this reading all right so it looks like for the end of october since this is a general reading, um, it wasn't specifically for love, but you do have a connection. Um, again, this is tarot and oracle. Take what resonates, leave what doesn't. If the message resonates, then it was for you. And if it doesn't, then it wasn't for you. So for the month of October, um, for the full moon, especially the, the blue moon, October 31st in specific, it looks like there's going to be somebody that is coming into you on an emotional level. This is someone that you possibly have felt a connection to, um, like falling in love or a feeling that you really like this person and you can possibly see a future with them. This person is someone who's passionate. This person is someone that you care a lot about, but who you haven't been paying attention to. So there's other things that have been going on in your life as of recently that you've been putting more attention into that than into your connection with this person. You might find yourself in some form of situation where you feel trapped. In this situation, it's possible that there's a third person involved or this entrapment could be something, something that you're creating in your mind. Um, that card is the ego card. So... You've created this 
like false sense of security in your mind and now the security is kind of falling away since you've met this person this and and this idea that you had about life in general and of love has completely fallen away since you've met this person and because of that you have a lot of work that you need to complete with your ego uh, there's that shadow side that i've talked about in past videos that you haven't taken the time to go ahead and work through this might be someone that you've had a past connection with before um it doesn't necessarily have to mean in this life it could be somebody from a past life um it could be a soulmate it could be a twin flame um karmic relationship it's somebody though that you've experienced a relationship with before um again it doesn't have to be in this life if it's someone from this life that you know you they're not a new connection no it's not a new connection it's somebody that definitely your old souls you've reincarnated together before um i feel like this person you have met in this life before um and that you're also aware of who this person is i don't think it's a new connection I feel like it's somebody who you might not have been in a physical relationship with in this life, but someone that you definitely know um, and who you definitely want to be in a relationship with or the thought it has crossed your mind. You just weren't ready because you were, you know, working on yourself and you felt trapped and kind of like you're not good enough to move forward with it. So while you've been doing that, you've you've tried your best to work on your spiritual growth as well as your emotional growth i do feel that by the end of october this person is gonna go ahead and let you know that they have feelings for you as well i feel like the two of you if you move forward in a relationship, then you're going to have a happy relationship. I mean, here you have the Ten of Cups. It's overfilling, you know. That's a happy card, the Ten of Cups. Um, that if you wind up going for a relationship with this person, that it's going to be rewarding. That you're going to be able to get everything that you desire out of that relationship. It's just that you need to be willing to take that leap of faith. Um, something that you haven't been willing to take before. It looks like you might have a decision to make, and I believe that has something to do with that entrapment that you've been feeling. Um, again, if you're in a thirty third party situation, maybe this decision you need to make is how do you get out of this situation? How do you end this third party situation that you find yourself in? sorry there's people outside um kids playing with basketballs and stuff so if you hear them i'm sorry um but here we have the queen of air which is also queen of swords um i'm a gemini so i resonate well with the queen of air hmm. i just noticed something that i haven't noticed on these cards before I see the artist's signature here. I don't know if that's significant or not. Um, Steve, his name is Steve. So if you know somebody named Steve, you know, maybe some communication is coming in from you for them. I feel like this person is also somebody who tends to live in a world of fantasy of their own. Um, not necessarily like witches and warlocks type of fantasy. Um, maybe 
like scientific fantasy and I'm saying that because I'm being drawn to this card in the corner I don't know if you can see but over here it looks like it's kind of like a planet and maybe like some sort of world That's just what, like, I really focused on. Um, yeah, rem re reminded me of, like, Jupiter, actually. Reminded me of Jupiter. From the colors and the shape of it. Yeah, so there's some communication that needs to be happening, and... If you're in this queen of air energy, you need to be the one making that decision. So even though it's a queen of air, it doesn't have to be a woman. Like if you're watching and you're man, you could be representing um, the queen of air energy at the moment. If it's you that's in this like mind entanglement, juggling of different decisions, but haven't made a decision, that could be you. Um, but the Queen of Swords, the Queen of Air is asking you to take a step back and make a decision. Um, and when you make a decision, try your best to communicate it clearly. Um, not just to yourself, but the other person involved. Also, make sure to release and let go of anything that doesn't serve you any longer. Um, that's something that we all should be working on repetitively anyway. But the Queen of Air is also asking you if there's something that is holding you back, you know, back to here, ego. If there's something that's entrapping you, make sure to release it and letting it and to let it go. And a good time to be doing that would be on the October 31st full moon. Um, yeah, full moons are really good times to release and let go of things that no longer serve you. And this moon, especially because it's not just the harvest moon of the year, it is also the blue moon. You know, once in a blue moon, things come around once in a while. Um, that would be the time to make that final decision that you've been holding yourself back from making in your area of life. Um, Again, this wasn't supposed to be like a love reading, but it's coming out as one. Let's see. So I do feel like this relationship with this other person is definitely going to be a good relationship. It's definitely something that's going to be able to be worked through. Um, and the two of you are going to be able to work things out and move closer together not just physically if physically like you guys live in separate location if physically the distance is an issue you'll be able to work through that um but i don't i don't think that is the issue there i think what this distance between you two has been has been the fact that you're not communicating because some someone one of you and more than likely it's the person watching this reading um, you've been feeling like you're stuck and you've created this, this bubble of being stuck because you're not moving through the energy. You're just sitting here, not doing anything. And you're like, I want to move forward, but I want to stay here. I want to move forward, but I'm not ready. I don't think I'm good enough. I don't know where I'm going to go. Whatever. Sorry, I'm getting getting choked up here. <laughs> Again, it's Mercury retrograde, so bear with me. Also, this is like the first time I'm posting a tarot oracle reading online. I've done a few for my friends over the years, but I've never been brave enough to put it on YouTube, so bear with me here. There's also those things going through. So I, I don't feel that the king of water in this is specific to someone, um, but you do have queen of air 
It could be air signs, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius with the King of Water. So yeah, King of Cups, Queen of Swords. The water being Pisces, Scorpio, and Cancer. Could it be significant to some of you? It's possible that one of your sun signs is an air sign while the other sun sign is a water sign. Um, especially because it's king and queen, which is divine masculine, divine feminine. But it doesn't have to be. These could be energies that you yourself are integrating. You could be working on balancing those energies within yourself. And by balancing um, this queen of air energy with the king of water energy, you can be balancing your communication with your emotions to be able to come out and tell the person that you care about how you feel or if you're already in a relationship. Um, so this reading so far has pretty much been about singles, but if you're already in a relationship, this can be talking about an emotional turmoil that you've been experiencing. Um, maybe there's been an issue with your partner that also makes you feel trapped. Like there's a lack of communication. One of you wants one thing and the other one seems to be wanting a different direction in life. But either way for both the singles watching this as well as for those in relationships, um, the awakening card is asking us all to take a look at what's going on in our lives from a different perspective. I mean, we're all going through a current awakening right now. You know, Earth is going through this complete transformation. And in that transformation, we're moving from a three-dimensional mentality to the fifth-dimensional mentality. So we're looking at things from a higher perspective. So Archangel Gabriel in this card is asking us to look at things from a higher perspective. So he's asking you not to look at your current situation as if it were right in front of you, like you're on a timeline. Don't look at it from this perspective because that's what you've been looking at it as. You know, you've been going around in circles in your head. Sorry. Um, You've been going around in circles in your head and feeling trapped because you keep looking at it from this perspective. You need to take yourself out and above and look at it from down below. Once you're able to pull yourself out of it and look at it down there, then you can see everything from a bird's eye view. Um, I don't know if you can tell, but it looks like Archangel Gabriel like floating above the clouds, looking down, just looking down um, as she's floating through the sky. Ah, I'm really thirsty. I didn't get enough water before this anyway. Bottom of the deck, Queen of Earth. Um, Queen of Earth is also Queen of Pentacles going to be fire energy so the card says make time for those around you take, take a sensible approach deal with challenges in a kind and understanding manner this is also going to be about material abundance so this person that you're dealing with um, this person that you either want to be in a relationship with if you're single or the person who you are currently in a relationship with, if you are a couple, there's going to be complete abundance with this person once you release yourself from the trap that you've put yourself into. When you do that, when you look at that one thing in your life that needs immediate attention, then you're going to move closer to this abundance that the queen of earth the queen of pentacles is offering now this is a beautiful card it's filled with you know here's this fairy queen here um who is thoughtful creative warm and sensible the queen there 
it's Queen Fairy. You know, she has all this money, all this gold, all this coin surrounding her. And it's, it's beautiful. So when you deal with the current challenges that you face in this relationship or the person who's not yet in a relationship with you, if you deal with the challenges that you're currently facing with this person, then you're going to end up abundant in not only your love life, but your material life as well. It does look like at the moment, the emotional side of your life is the one that is ruling over everything else. You know, that this like, it might not be the thing that is on your mind right now, but it's the energy that is pushing you forward right now. So once you work through what's holding you back and, and what it is that's holding you back is your ego. Um, that voice inside of your head that's telling you don't do it or do it because of blah, blah, blah reason. Um, and yet you're not moving anywhere. The energy is stagnant. Once you deal with that, the energy is just going to flow. And when energy flows, abundance comes in. Let's see. I'm trying to see if there's a significant number. Um, we have the three here. Twelve, which equals three. Two queens, two queens, I think in this case are meaning that it, this is, is specifically happening to a feminine personality. And just because you're a female doesn't mean you have to have a feminine personality, doesn't mean that if you're a male that you can't have a feminine personality. Um, you know, we, we receive energy we take in energy through our feminine side and we release it through our masculine side so your feminine side is the one that's doing the most receiving of this energy right now bringing in this this love if it's new um if you're not in real in, if you're not in a relationship with this person right now that's what i'm considering to be new um if you're bringing that relationship in then that's your feminine side of you that's bringing that in. If you're already in a relationship with this person, um, then the feminine side of yourself is where this entrapment is happening. So it's something that you need to work on on your feminine side. Um, being more creative, being more loving and kind towards yourself and figuring out where this entrapment in your life stands. Let me get a couple romance oracle cards for you. Since it wound up turning into a, a love reading. Um, I was going to pull it anyway, but it wasn't going to be part of the same. It was just going to be a general um, for the end of October for the full moon. When I split it apart, we have very soon and also getting to know each other. So there is something that is coming in. It's going to be by the end of October. Um, again, if you're already in a relationship, then you're going to be able to work through whatever problems are happening in your relationship by October 31st. Um, let me shuffle some more. Good, good shuffle system. These ones are easier to shuffle. Okay. Some guidance, general guidance for everyone for October 31st. Full moon and blue moon in love. Guidance for love for the end of October. I get some guidance, please. Okay. So we have 
compassion, codependency, and love yourself first. So I believe, where did it go? Do I have it still? I put them away. Let's see if I can find it. I believe what this is talking about is this card here, the ego um, being entrapped. It's possible. So I'll do couples first. So if you are in a relationship currently, it's possible that you're very codependent on this person. Um, this person you're in a relationship with takes advantage of you in, in some sort of way. You might enjoy helping them um, and they might be grateful for the fact that you help them in whatever given way that you do. Hi, Evie. But and they also take advantage of your kindness. What you're being called to do is to respect yourself, to love yourself, and to know that you deserve more than a codependent relationship. Sorry for you couples. <laughs> um, if you believe that this relationship that you're currently in is one that can move past that trap. Hi, Evie. Come on. Oh, light just blinded. Um, if you believe that you can move past this trap in your life and... I think from the other deck, we can see that, yes, you can. Um, you might be able to do this with passion. So filling your heart with things that you enjoy, being creative, like I said. Um, if you like singing and dancing, go for it. You know, bring out that feminine, feminine side of you, even if you're a male. You know, if you have to be by yourself in a room, no one else around, and just being yourself, you know, sing, dance, dress up, whatever. Um, do something that you're passionate about and that brings you joy. Because when you're doing that, you're actually able to work through that entrapment. Um, I also do feel that this codependency is not just the person you're in a relationship with. I feel like you as well are the codependent one um, in your relationship. I feel like you might depend on your partner more than they depend on you. So in a way, you're taking advantage of their love more so than they're taking advantage of you. And you're doing this because you're relying on them to fulfill a need in your life. Um, possibly having to do with the need for self-love, which is why this card came out, the Love Yourself First card. Um, so you're relying on your partner to fill that part of you that you need to fill yourself. Evie. <laughs> All right, that's for...